Oh, right here, Kings of Leon's disastrous Reading Festival appearance. Didn't hear about this, and I'm guessing it's from this year. It's a new video. <clears throat> I like Kings of well, I did like Kings of Leon. I went off of them, um, is it only by the night? After that album, I fell off with them when they did the radioactive song. I didn't, yeah, I fell off hard with Kings of Leon, but the first album is still one of my favourite albums. Great album. And on Only By The Night, what's it, Cold Desert, it's a great, great song. There was some good stuff on that album, but on that, yeah, I think it's their fourth album, you you can hear them, even on that, kind of tipping over to, like, trying to be mainstream, and mainstream appeal, but, <clears throat> yeah, Kings of Leon's disastrous Reading Festival appearance, so let's go. In 2009, Kings of Leon were oh, virtually inescapable. Jesus. The group's fourth album, Only by the Night, would establish the Nashville Four Piece as a household name, but to their longtime fans, the group had sold out and left behind their southern rock sound. Kings of Leon's fourth album and the success that came along with it soon revealed cracks in the band that showed up during their live performances, and those problems would follow them well into their fifth album. The history of Kings of Leon begins with the three Falwell brothers, Caleb on guitar, Nathan on drums, and Jared on bass. The brothers would grow up in a pretty religious household with a father who was an evangelist who traveled across America, preaching at Pentecostal churches and tent revivals. It would be kind of funny that their father, before becoming a minister, was a pretty avid rock and roll fan, taking a liking to groups like Led Zeppelin, Bad Company, and Thin Lizzy. But by the time he had his sons, he had found God and was now listening to the oldies, which was really the only music his kids were allowed to listen to, including the Ronettes and the Beach Boys. But it would be youngest brother Jared who'd recall to New Musical Express that it was when he was in Spanish class one day classmate of his turned him on to Pixie's record Surfer Rosa, and that had a profound impact on him. Inspired by a stranger story about how he made 500 bucks writing what he described as country songs, brothers Caleb and Nathan, who were already contemplating becoming musicians, now had the confirmation that they needed. And their parents would divorce in 1997, and by 1999, both Caleb and Nathan would move to Nashville. They would meet a big time manager in Ken Levitin, whose clients included Leonard Skinner and Emmy Lou Harris. Soon enough, the brothers were put in touch with record labels in New York City, and they would end up signing a deal with RCA, and they would actually be signed by the same A&R man who signed The Strokes. Caleb and Nathan were now sent back to Nashville with a record deal in their hand no, look, and told to assemble a band. Bet. They would soon add their younger brother Jared and no. push him to learn bass, which he did. It was now 2001, and soon enough their first no. cousin Matthew, who was also a guitarist, would join them rounding up the group's lineup. Taking the name Kings of Leon, they were now living a pretty hard partying lifestyle that their father preached against. Kings of Leon's initial sound was more southern rock, and it was between 2003 and 2007 the band would release three albums that soon established the group as a cult act, with their third record Because of the Times, which came out in 2007, as being the bridge between their southern rock sound and where they were headed in the future. Despite being from America though, the first country to really embrace Kings of Leon would be the UK. Their third record would top the UK charts, with Caleb telling BBC Six at the time, we're just making music for ourselves and luckily people are with us, especially you guys. You guys, the British public, have always been with us, and the fact that we've made a record that's a little different and a little riskier, and it got to number one here, that's the best thing. The band soon ditched their retro appearance and took on a more of a polished look, but the group would talk to Rolling Stone in 2013 and discussed how they felt kind of fake during their earlier years, with guitarist Matthew telling the magazine, we used to grow our hair out really long, wear tight clothes. We were being kind of fake back then. With Jared adding about their newly polished look, no, no. now we're just normal and comfortable <laughs> with ourselves. I can barely listen to our first and second records. Okay, it's very cringeworthy for me. To me, because of the times is our first Go record. On, we were no. finally being ourselves. It was the following year Kings of Leon would no. release what would be their breakout record 2008's Only By The Night, which would no. make the group a household name thanks to the inescapable hits that summer, including Sex On Fire and Use Somebody. 
Kings of Leon were soon criticized by fellow musicians with Jim James of My Morning Jacket commenting on the band's new success. I don't want to write about my sex parts being on fire just to have a huge song. While Liam Gallagher would add, it seems to me they've gone for the bucks. The group, however, would shoot back against their critics with Matthew telling the Oklahoman, I don't feel like we're in the mainstream really at all. I mean, I know we are now because we'll hear our song on the radio and then the next song will be Kanye West or Britney Spears, but we're definitely still in the alternative vein, adding a... I, yeah. Over here, they were huge. Like, they were huge. Um, but as a Kings of Leon fan, I like that fourth album. But I'd say that that album's actually the bridge into their later, more mainstream. And there's nothing wrong with having mainstream success, but there is something wrong with turning your music mainstream. Like, and yeah, if you, you'll lose your actual fans, and the people that you will gain are fickle them referring to their old fans like the raw music of the earlier days i'm sure we've lost a couple of fans along the way i've seen girls down front who obviously have been fans since the beginning and they'll be going crazy for the whole set and then sex on fire comes on and they just sit there and cross their arms and and act like they hate being there i guess they just hate the new sound it was by the summer of 2009 that kings of leon were announced to be headlining both the leeds and reading festivals and when the group played the Reading Festival, their appearance would go down to become one of the most memorable in history, but not for the reason you might think. Despite playing a 20 song set, Sex on Fire would be played midway through the band's show, while You Somebody would be the second last song played. It didn't appear the audience members were diehard fans, but rather there to hear the band's two most recent hits. And that was something that didn't really sit well with the band. The crowd's reaction to the group's Reading It's that type of festival though. You need to to get actual music fans. You you need to in our country at least. You need to play in like rave festivals, Reading Festival, and like all them real big ones. Even Glastonbury, they're so moody, and they're just filled with dickheads that are there just because they they've heard about it and they know it's a big deal, and they're just dickheads going there to fucking cause trouble and whatever. If you really want to play to music fans, you need to go to a rave festival and play. I see Leonard Cohen at a rave festival. It disappointed the band, as you can see here. There are a lot of great bands playing this week, man. I wish I could stay here the whole weekend. This is unbelievable. Um, wow. Are you guys still like singing along? All right, we're just going to blow through these songs. Um, I'm trying to hold back and not say anything negative, man, but... Um, I hope it warms up out here because we need it. We need you guys to help us do this, you know? Kings of Leon soon ended things by destroying their guitars and walking off stage, according to witnesses. And it was following their set, reports surfaced online that Caleb at one point told the crowd, and I quote, We know you're sick of Kings of Leon. We're f***ing sick of Kings of Leon too. But we get up here every night and I thank God for everything I've had. So for all those who don't give a f*** about us, I understand, but we've worked so hard to be here. We're the kings of leon so fuck you it was flowing yeah that's the thing it's like you're not gonna the, the real music fans in the, in the uk um yeah they're not going to read well i suppose there there is some but like i say there that is the crowd of the charts people like and people that aren't really into music and like I said before, when you decide to go mainstream and change your sound like and polish it up and that, you lose your actual people that do fuck with you. And like I say, you gain people that just want to hit and as soon as you're done, you're replaceable with the next person who makes a manufactured piece of garbage. Um, so yeah, like your core music followers that really fuck with you like me i was a huge kings of leon fan from the first album like they were huge here but it the fourth album there's still good ones on there there are good tracks like it's still a good album but the next one is just drivel um but i can see why people say like that is it's kind of like rubber soul to revolver but bad
you know what I mean? When the Beatles went from Rob Soul to Revolver, it was them expanding and, and maturing. But when Kings of Leon did it, it was we're selling out. Performance that the band took to Twitter to express their displeasure with the crowd. The group's drummer would write, Reading, what the f Zero love for the Kings. I know it was cold, but holy Y'all were frozen. I can only hope Leeds is in better form. It was a few days after their Reading set, the band played the Leeds Festival, where things appeared to go a little smoother. Caleb would tell the crowd at Leeds, we're only five songs in and you've blown Reading to hell. This is for all you people who didn't come for two songs. Following Kings of Leon's appearance, Caleb would give an interview looking back at that summer, telling BBC Six Music, I want to do some interviews and just apologize for my attitude. We took it out on a lot of people, me particularly. I forget which festival it was, Reading, where we had a big backlash. I took it out in the crowd and at the end of the day, it was probably my fault. Because of the success, I expected everyone to cheer for everything we did. It would be nine years later, the band... Especially, like, like I say, when they were good, they were huge here. They could do no wrong as far as we was concerned. Like, they was a loved, and I suppose, yeah, for the... For the one, because they even wrote the, um, is it Fans, I think it's called, on the third album, which is wrote as a kind of, yeah, a, it's dedicated to the English fans. Um, but then, yeah, it's it's still like, I think Jack White said it too about here, that here is still a place for music lovers, but of music lovers, like it, yeah, and... I don't know what Kings Leon was thinking, to be fair. But I suppose they just assumed that the UK was going to lap up everything they did, but it's, it's like, nah. Would return to Reading with less theatrics and much less controversy. But in the years that followed their 2009 appearance, trouble seemed to follow the band everywhere, at least for the next several years. Kings of Leon would return in 2010 with their fifth album, Come Around Sundown, which topped the album charts in numerous countries and it would even peak at number two in the US, but it only sold about a third of its predecessor and Kings of Leon were going through a lot of internal turmoil. Caleb would reflect back on the group's 2010 album telling Rolling Stone, I pretty much checked out for that record. Matthew meanwhile would add, it was pretty much a battle of wills. Caleb, I would say, we need to try and write some hit songs so we're not one hit wonders. Matthew would say the word radio and Caleb would get so pissed off, Jared would add. The tension in the studio soon spilled over to the road as well. The band members were so tired of each other that they were traveling in separate tour buses with Jared adding, we played the same set list for three years because we couldn't be bothered. The only time we had fun was on stage, everything else sucked. Fast forward to July 27, 2011, during a show in Dallas, Texas, frontman Caleb seemed to be heavily intoxicated and slurred his speech between songs and complained about the heat. He would soon leave the stage claiming that he was not feeling well and he would tell the audience he was going backstage to throw up and get another beer. He would tell the crowd he'd be back to play several more songs, but he never returned to the stage. It would result in the band apologizing to the concert attendees and ending the show. Kings of Leon would announce a week later that the remainder of their US dates, which was about 26 in total, would be canceled. The band were soon hit with headlines suggesting that they were headed for a breakup, but they would seem to persevere and Caleb would spend nine months being sober to prove to his band that he could straighten up his act. Kings of Leon's tour cancellation statement would cite Caleb's vocal issues and health as the reason for the scrapped tour dates. He had been getting steroid injections for his throat to save it from the alcohol abuse he was doing to his body. He would admit to Q Magazine in 2013, when you're going as fast as we were going or working as hard as we were, you get into a rhythm, then it becomes a case of, well, if I'm going to go out there and kick ass tonight, then I need to grab a couple of drinks first. And I that's the thing, yeah, I remember, like I say, Cold Desert, I recommend listening to that song, it's a great song, and, and it kind of really tells you about him, Caleb, um, like I see an interview with him, and he said about that song that his girlfriend can't listen to it, his girlfriend was the only, he said, she's the only person that sees me in that type of headspace, so she understands when she hears it, where I was, but basically he'd say he'd take a load of prescription pills and drink, wake up in the morning and there'd be a song written in his book that had the handwriting of like a three-year-old and he said but that was my best lyrics but I, I had no memory of writing it and cold desert come out of one of them binges um but yeah i recommend listening to that because it's a jesus don't love me 
Jesus don't love me, no one's ever carried my load, I'm too young to feel this old. I never ever cried when I was feeling down, I've always been scared of the sound. Just great words all the way through it, but very, very sad. And yeah, a great song though, Cold Desert, check it out if you don't know it. To need a steroid shot just to sing. After a while it gets on top of you, and it would result in a pretty volatile kind of atmosphere around the band. Kings of Leon would return in 2013 with the record Mechanical Bull, and in the years that followed, the group would be less active, releasing creatively. two albums over the past 10 years with 2016's Walls and 2021's When You See Yourself. They have, however, been pretty active on the touring circuit. That does it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. And if you have suggestions for future topics like the CME cover, use the link. Yeah, it really was. I know, like, personally, oh, you can only speak of that, really. But it was. It was that fourth album. When the next one came in out and the first single was that Radioactive, I think. Yeah, it was a sign of, like, ah, uh, they've gone to the dark side of the force. Um, but, like I say, there's still bangers on the first four albums. But it definitely gets less and less. The first one is just a banger of an album. So every song on that's just a great track. And it's I think it's uh, literally a half hour. It's just perfect. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, Redding, I don't know what I was thinking of playing them big festivals. I don't know why anybody praise them, to be fair, they're shitholes. Not that I've ever been, but I know people that have been and just like, oh, it's, it's the worst. Especially like, I know people that last their life go in the summer, going to festivals and they've gone to them big ones and like, they're just shit. But yeah, that's the reaction, sweet.